Poland has reached a milestone that many European armies have talked about for years but struggled to achieve in practice, the first serial production Borsuk infantry fighting vehicles have finally entered service. For the Polish army, this moment is more than a routine delivery, it marks the beginning of a long-term transformation of the country's mechanized forces and, at the same time, a powerful signal that Poland's defense industry is maturing into one of the most capable in Europe. Fifteen brand-new tracked IFVs have been transferred to the 15th Mechanized Brigade stationed in Gazyko. These vehicles are the first to arrive under a contract signed only in March 2025, covering 111 units scheduled for delivery between 2025 and 2029. For a program that took years of development, technical refinement, budget negotiations, and political will, this first batch represents both a culmination and a beginning. The delivery schedule tells an interesting story about industrial scaling and realistic production capacity. Poland delivered 15 units in 2025, will add just three more in 2026, and then dramatically accelerate output, 33 vehicles in 2027 and 55 more between 2028 and 2029. Additionally, six prototypes will be upgraded to full serial standard. In total, the first contract costs around 6.57 billion zloty, or roughly $1.81 billion. The price tag immediately caught observers' attention. When broken down, the cost per unit appears significantly higher than European counterparts, approximately $16 million per IFV. But this comparison is misleading. Poland is not simply buying vehicles, it is building an entirely new production ecosystem, assembly lines, testing facilities, digital manufacturing tools, quality control systems, and supplier networks. For a country determined to establish its own independent IFV manufacturing base, these expenses are inevitable. They are investments, not losses, and they will shape all future armored vehicle programs. What makes the Borsuk important is not only that it exists, but that Poland built it at a time when global demand for modern tracked IFVs is rising faster than supply. Most European armies still rely on 1970s and 1980s era platforms, and industrial capacity has shrunk after decades of underfunding. By contrast, Poland has been expanding its defense spending aggressively, and the Borsuk is one of the clearest examples of that shift. The vehicle itself is a 28-ton amphibious IFV, quite a rare capability in today's market, where heavier, non-swimming designs dominate. Amphibious mobility remains a requirement for Poland due to its terrain and operational doctrine, particularly in the northeast where river crossings and wetlands complicate maneuver warfare. Despite its relatively low weight, the Borsuk offers frontal protection against 14.5mm heavy machine gun fire and side protection against 7.62mm armor-piercing rounds. For an amphibious IFV, these are respectable figures, providing a balanced compromise between mobility, protection, and weight. The heart of the vehicle is the ZSSW-30 remotely operated turret, a fully Polish design integrating western weapons and sensors. This turret houses a 30mm Mk44 Bushmaster II cannon, a UKM 2000C coaxial machine gun, and a dual launcher for Israeli spike anti tank guided missiles. The armament mix gives the Borsuk credible firepower against enemy infantry, armored vehicles, fortifications, and even tanks at long range thanks to the spike missiles. It brings Poland in line with NATO nations that have modernized their IFVs around digital fire control systems, stabilized turrets, independent commander sites, and network-centric battlefield integration. Equally important is what comes next. Poland has already announced preparations for a new order, which suggests that the armed forces expect the Borsuk to become their principal IFV for decades. Beyond the baseline troop carrier version, Specialized variants are in development, command vehicles, support models, and potentially heavier non-amphibious versions with reinforced armor. This is a common evolutionary step seen in all modern IFV families, start with a core platform, then expand into mission-specific configurations that cover everything from reconnaissance to battlefield repair. 
By building this family around a domestic platform, Poland guarantees both logistical independence and predictable supply chains, advantages that many European nations discovered the hard way after facing delays and shortages in foreign procurement programs. At the same time, the Borsuk is not Poland's only IFV project. In parallel, the country is developing the Radl, a heavy-tracked infantry fighting vehicle with significantly higher protection capable of resisting 30mm cannon fire. This heavier class is becoming increasingly important on modern battlefields where drones, artillery fragmentation, and improvised explosive devices create harsher survivability requirements. If the Borsuk represents mobility and amphibious flexibility, the Radl will represent brute force and armored resilience. Together, they will form a two-tiered system that allows the Polish Army to tailor mechanized units for different combat environments, much like the U.S. Army fields both Bradley's and the new XM-30, or like Israel deploys the Neymar Heavy APC alongside more mobile vehicles. The broader strategic context also matters. Poland is emerging as one of Europe's most active defense players, not only buying but producing armored vehicles at scale. Programs like SAFE, the EU's new joint defense funding initiative, could open the door to additional orders for Polish platforms, especially if funds are allocated to strengthen NATO's eastern flank. Some of these resources are expected to go to Ukraine, raising the possibility that future Borsuk or Radl variants could play a role in Ukraine's long-term rearmament. European armies increasingly seek platforms that can be produced within the EU, without dependence on US or non-NATO suppliers. Poland is positioning itself to fill that gap. To understand the importance of the Borsuk, one must consider how rare it is today for any country to develop a fully domestic IFV from scratch. Most Western nations either rely on decades-old platforms or purchase foreign designs. Even wealthy states face delays, cost overruns, and industrial bottlenecks. Poland, meanwhile, has managed to move from concept to serial production while simultaneously modernizing its tank fleet, artillery, and air defense systems. This momentum reflects a broader national strategy build a military large enough and modern enough to deter aggression independently, and establish an industrial base capable of sustaining a long, high-intensity conflict. The first 15 Borsiks are just the beginning. Production rates will rise, new variants will emerge, contracts will expand, and the broader industrial ecosystem around the vehicle will mature. Today, the numbers may look small, and critics may point to high unit costs or slow initial delivery. But these criticisms ignore the long game. Poland is not simply acquiring vehicles, it is building a modern armored vehicle industry. Once the assembly lines stabilize and economies of scale take effect, costs will fall and output will increase dramatically. In a decade, Poland may not only fully re-equip its mechanized brigades but also become a major exporter of IFVs to Europe and beyond. For now, the arrival of the first serial Borsiks is a symbolic and practical victory. It shows that Poland set a goal, funded it, built the industrial tools to achieve it, and delivered operational vehicles on time. In a Europe rearming under urgent pressure, such achievements will separate countries that talk about modernization from those that actually execute it. The Borsik, with its amphibious mobility, modern turret, and scalable production potential, may well become one of the defining armored vehicles of the new European security era.